Alrighty, you guys. So, welcome back. Uh, I'm sorry it's been a long time since I made a video. Um, just been kind of busy. Uh, business is starting to pick up a little bit, so I haven't really had the opportunity to be able to put things together. Um, I know I was supposed to do the table vase painting. I did get a vote on three colors that I'll be using for it. I haven't gotten around to doing it yet because of my workshop table being really filled up right now. Hence the reason I am working out of my truck bed. Um, should be interesting. Uh, I'm working at night here. Pretty dark out. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's that. But hey, the weather's warm enough out here, so I'm not worried about it. Today, we are putting together a 7 cubic foot poly gorilla cart. Um, pretty self-explanatory. The instructions are right there. It tells you everything you need. Pretty much all you need for tools is just a um, M13 wrench and a um, just a regular pair of pliers. But I am going to try to use this Milwaukee Impact because I use this thing for everything. And uh, it's just kind of my go-to tool um but yeah you'll see the package is numbered gorilla cart does really good with that um or the gorilla company does really good with that when it comes to building their products they number each piece so that when you're doing the instructions you know what goes with what um so size of the bucket this bucket can hold uh i believe 1200 pounds in it which is very good for what I'm going to be using it for. They can get pretty pricey. You can find them at Home Depot and several other stores. Um, you can buy them at Home Depot for $169 before tax. Um, but uh, in my line of work, it's kind of something that I need. And uh, more recently, I was trying to wheelbarrow a bunch of bark and things, and I actually uh, caused myself to get a pinch nerve out of it. So I went ahead and bought, broke down and bought one of these things. Anyways, for your assembly, you have the main bucket. This is going to be your main thing that you're working on. Four pneumatic tires, very nice tires too, might I add. You have your pull cart handle and your dump handle. And then just your basic tools. So not too hard to assemble, but... Um, yeah, let's uh, get down to business before it gets too late. All right, I got to find some place to set this. All right, just a little friendly side note for you guys um, building these at home. Uh, when you go to put your screws in, or when you go to do this process, unless you want to be building the bucket sideways um, instead of keeping it face down like this, um, I would advise putting all of your screws in if you can. Sometimes you can't do it because your plastic is pushed away, but sometimes they don't cut it out all the way like that, and you can use that to your advantage to put the screws in. So um, mostly they say that you can build these buckets like this, and uh, I'm trying to remember because I actually used to build these things all the time, but I'm just trying to remember how I used to do it. Um, like I said, pretty simple and self-explanatory, but there are cheap ways to build it faster and uh, less, I guess, tedious. I guess you can say that. But anyways, yeah, just you just uh, use the plastic to hold the screws in until you get your bolts in. And uh, yeah, just a friendly side note. Alrighty, it's probably going to be a little bit quiet because I'm outside, but I think I'm just going to try to get through this whole thing. Um... And I'll just edit out the parts to keep the video short. But uh, I think I'm just going to let you guys watch the whole assembly on this.
That helps to uh, get these things on finger tight first. These are uh, locking nuts. And, uh, it just helps put, put them on finger tight before you try to go at them with a impact or anything like that. And uh, just a note, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but just a, a personal note, if you're using the impact for this, be very careful how much torque you put on it because it is gorilla cart. It's very tough and very durable, but an impact will bust the plastic on this trying to pull the screw through. So just be careful with that. jumped ahead of myself um, and not mentioned it but these carts do come with the tire frame and uh, I know that's kind of an obvious thing to mention but just want to make sure I'm being accurate I'll line that up with the holes there. So you can see holes on the main front assembly frame. And they'll line up with the holes on the on the back portion that we just assembled for the crossbars. mind there's these little plastic they look like washers they're spacers and they're actually going to go between the metal to space it out now you don't have to use them but uh, just for longevity reasons you probably should I mean because if they if they bust anyways with them being plastic it's it's fine um, they're just you can just tighten up the bolts but it's better to have them on there than it is to have the metal grinding. Just put your little metal washer on there, and then your locking nut. And again, 
always try to do this stuff finger tight. I know I just uh, bolted it down um, with the impact, uh, just for memorization reasons. Put everything on finger tight, and then uh, when you're working with locking nuts, go back after you're done, after you get it all assembled and retighten everything up. Because um, if you do something wrong, then you'll make it a lot easier on yourself to not have to strip a nut just to get it back off again. If you have to go back and redo something. Just allows it to be a little more forgiving for you. Plus it allows you extra room to do stuff like that when you need to. I already know what I'm doing with this because uh, I've been building them for a while. I should know what I'm doing with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it. If I happen to mess up on something, then I will edit this out of the video. Step three, guys. Step three, you're going to want to save your bigger bolts for the back end here. These two long ones here go back here. The little bolts are going to go on the front up here. These guys can give you some trouble, so don't tighten down your back ones all the way until you get your front ones tightened.
this is where things start to get fun because you have to do this this part with the cart sideways because um, you don't want your stuff slipping back right there. I'm gonna try it and see if I can get it done without having to worry about it slipping back through there. But if it does, then bear with me. ones in the back. If they don't want to go in at first, just beat them in. It's, it's a good sign that they don't want to push all the way through without needing to be worked in because that means that they'll hold themselves in there. Little ones on the front. Well, kind of little ones towards the middle, trying to say um, just for less confusing reasons. I think those should hold in there. You just want to make sure that you're going through these holes accurately, easily. There we go. first but don't tighten them down just put them on finger tight just to keep them from slipping back down in there These guys are the arms, or their uh, bracing arms, are going to slip down over these bolts. Don't force them, because if you force them, you will actually tear the threads on these. Um, and you don't want to do that, because you only get one set. And they're not cheap.
go ahead and take these down. Alright, now put the tires on. I'm going to start from the left side over here and work my way over to the right so that you guys can see what's going on. Always make sure when you put your tires on that your fill valve is on the outside. It's kind of a really simple common thing that people tend to make the mistake with putting this on the inside like that. Don't do that. If you're going to have it, or if you're going to be, uh, depending on the side that you're putting together, always have this facing the outside of the cart. on just like that. You get four of these big washers and just slip right on there. And then your locking pins. Makes it really nice and easy to change these tires on. So you guys can get a close-up this time of actually how to put these on. So you just slip it on there. It goes all the way through. Take your washer. Stick it on there like so. The bearing is about to pop out on me. That's not good. I guess it's made like that. I just used to build my smaller ones and they don't have those. Alrighty. These are cool, but uh, be very careful with them because if they snap back on your fingers, it's gonna hurt. 
not gonna break anything, but it is gonna be enough to uh, make you think about it. But just like that, it's not coming off there. You guys can't see what's going on with the front tires here, but or on the front end here, but the front tires are just pretty much the same assembly as the back. So just keep that in mind. I'm just working with limited space here, so So step five, you want to turn the curb around. I'm trying not to drop it out of my truck bed here. Sorry for taking so long. So, these do have a little bit of weight to them. Alright, so what we're going to be working on is putting the um, dump cart handle on, which just goes right, the screws go right there. So, one, two, three, four. It's going to go on this side on the front. So, yeah. Find a place to set you guys back here so you can watch. I don't know if you can see or do I need to go further back or closer up. There we go. Alright. It's gonna be this guy right here. Face just like that. Excuse me if my big head gets in the camera. I'm not using my table vice to hold my phone this time, so. Alrighty, this is gonna come with the. locking nut, nylon thread, washer, so washer, locking nut with the nylon thread, that's why they call them knocking, or locking nuts. Um, what is actually going to happen with these is if it starts to untwist, it'll actually grind that nylon into the threads and it'll block the threads so that this doesn't come off. It's a cool feature, but it makes it a pain in the butt in the long run if you ever have to pull them off for any reason. Alright, you can just pretty much set these down in here because of the octagonal design. So you can just pretty much run the head right down in there. And it pushes all the way through. 
which is nice because uh, sometimes if you do it right, you don't have to uh, use an, a um, anything to hold it while you're screwing it in. It just you can just use the plastic to hold it, and that way you only have to work with pushing it in with your finger instead of holding it with a pair of pliers or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and set all four of these in here. Normally, I wouldn't build this in, at night. I know whoever's watching uh, might be asking why I'm building this at night. Um, I don't uh, work on Saturdays or Sundays um, because of just what I believe is being a Christian. And... Uh, it's not anything that's like denominationally, um, church denomination or anything like that, that, that says specifically. It's just, I try to stick with what the Bible talks about, uh, taking the, taking the Sabbath off and taking a day of rest and that being good for a man and that the Sabbath being made for man and not man for the Sabbath and that type of thing. Um, so I'm doing this at night right now. That being said, because I can't build it tomorrow, and I can't build it on, or I can't build it on uh, Saturday for it being a rest day, I just won't do that. And I don't want to build it on Sunday because that's my uh, my free day to take care of personal things or go to church or anything like that. So uh, I lost the light, but we are still recording. Alrighty, so I'm gonna wrap it up um monday anyways is uh, i need this monday morning and uh that's the reason i am building it right now because i won't get time to build it at any other point so basically you just want to put that on there find your holes 